This is the Podcraft Beer Show, episode 14 for October 19th. Today we'll investigate a beer from Side Project, a collab from Humble Sea, Moxa and Mostra, and a beer from Burgeon. <laughs> This is the Podcraft Beer Show, where we talk about craft beer from Southern California and beyond. Today, uh, we're going to cover a beer from Side Project, a collab from uh, Humble Sea, and a uh, a hazy IPA from Virgin. Charlie, I was waiting for you to step in. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Chris. This is your other host, Charlie. Hey, hey. We got uh, tech guy, Steve. Hello. Steve. Did I say this before? If it- if we didn't have Steve here, we would just be drinking beer. That's it. <laughs> That's exactly what it'd be. This just would be. Chris and I drinking beer. So, hey, so uh, uh, today we're gonna we're gonna look at those beers that we mentioned. But first, uh, to connect with the show, to get all the show notes uh, with all the links to everything we mentioned today, uh, feel free to go to thepodcraft.com. dot com. Website contains links to the uh, to help uh, to to connect to the podcast of your choosing. I guess the the platform of your choosing. The stuff. Uh, just head over to thepodcraft.com. Uh, please consider recommending the podcraft to all other craft beer fans in your I can already smell family. that thing. Just popping that lid is beautiful. Yeah, so first up is a uh, is a Saison from uh, from Side Project. It smells fantastic. So this is uh, Beer DuPage. Our Beer DuPage uh, blend number six. It's a Saison aged in uh, uh, wine barrels. Oh, yeah. It's really tart. <laughs> Give me some. Wow, that's, uh, that's, back that's of the really throat good. action. Nice amber, amber smell. You can definitely smell a little bit of wine, I think, on there, huh? Yeah, I do. That's just a super clean uh, Saison. What's that? Uh, what's that coming at? About 4%. Little table beer. I don't know. It's you can't taste anything in it. It's not super boozy. Or no, it's super light, kind of airy. It's got a great color, great amber color. Uh, we're talking four percent. That's a phenomenal beer. You can drink that a lot. You can drink that all day. All day. That's what. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> wow, that's um, that's really really good. So I, I I grabbed this uh, this side project beer. They have uh, they're coming out with their um, beer barrel time uh, stout this next week. They've they've been uh, or is it O W K? They have a, a release coming out this week. Uh, they've kind of been pumping. Um, they're an all uh, barrel aged beer or brewery in uh, in in um, St. Louis. I haven't had too many of these. No, they're super difficult to get a hold of. They um, it doesn't look like they <clears throat> brew that many. I mean, they there's... don't. Yeah, no, they, they don't put out a whole lot of a whole lot of beers. Everything's everything's barrel aged. They're a smaller establishment. But they do a really cool thing on the website where they let they have links to all the beers though, like that they've ever done, which was not something we find on some other sites. Right. No, they, yeah, their their website's super, super cool. Um yeah, the beer that's coming out this this week is beer barrel time uh, for twenty twenty. Um their their beers are when they when they put out one of their special release beers, they sell out in seconds. Like they, uh, when I was in Minnesota, I, I tried to get a couple of, uh, special releases that they put up with the plans of driving down to pick them up. I'm like, how many people are going to go to St. Louis to pick up a beer that doesn't have a, uh, lot more people than there is bottles, it turns yeah, out. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, people know about it. It's not a secret. Right. You know, so you're going to get that. I mean, we've, I mean, we stood, stood in line before. I mean, that's bad enough. I mean, it'd be great if they had enough for everybody, but they just don't. Not the case. No, phenomenal brewery. Uh, Corey King is the guy's name who who uh, runs the place. The, uh, him and his brother, they both came from Chicago, the Chicago area. Uh, I think they were one of them was working at um, uh, Bur- they making Bourbon County, Goose Island. Mm-hmm. Opened up their brewery in, in St. Louis, and they've been around for uh, I think seven years, uh, making phenomenal barrel aged beers. This is good. I mean, I, like I said, we've only had a few of these, and. Each one of super them is, drinkable. Yeah, each one of them is delicious. Yeah, I'd say everything. Uh, everything I've popped from there has been uh, has been very very good. My brother asked me, he goes, "What are you going to do? Some crappy beers?" <laughs> and I'm like, um, 
uh, <laughs> I just him doing well. Um, what, uh, what do you mean by crappy beers? And I, he goes, ones you don't really like. And I said, well, why would we drink anything we don't like? So, you know, I was actually doing a little inventory this week. Um, and I think I'm going to have to, uh, hit some of these beers that maybe I don't really like, or I don't want to try. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get through some of them, but I'm willing to volunteer. Yeah. I think, uh, so I have some, I have some older peer stuff uh, that I've really? been sitting on, um, that that needs to be, uh, well, needs to be had. It's, um, we, we did do that one that didn't, didn't, uh, age very well. That, uh, throwing needles for sure was not the best one. I mean, it, it was still slightly drinkable, but it was because of that. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, that wasn't very good. The, um, uh, it, it, I, I'm going to drink more of this and attempt to try and forget about that last. Bit. Yeah, it wasn't very good. So anyways, it's delicious. I'll drink it. It's, it's obviously quality material. They, they don't do too many things that aren't very good. So that at least that I know of. Yeah, that's a, that's a great beer. Hey, did you guys, uh, did you guys have any good beers this week? Anything, uh, anything remarkable? Steve? Well, on, uh. Um, Oktoberfest side. I tried the Sierra Nevada Oktoberfest. It's oh, okay. a, it's more of a darker Meriton type beer. It was pretty good. How about you, Charlie? I, uh, I had some, uh, Creative Creature, uh, their sour ale that's red. It was pretty doggone delicious, I thought. Um, then I had, um, <laughs> I was drinking out of that, uh, German keg that I had in the back out there. Last night when I was cooking, and I also went with the uh, White Labs uh, Pilsner that uh, we picked up the other day. So, oh, yeah, three out of uh, oh, I also uh, the double orange starfish from um, Aslan was another one. It was good, yeah. But the other the Pilsner and the German beer and the sour from uh, Creative Creature were excellent. I like it. Where's Creative Creature from? Uh, it's El Cajon. Oh. It's the old... Um, you know, oh, we talked urban, about that. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Urban Brewery, uh, or Urban Pizza is it's the, the brewery that used to be urban. First, mm-hmm. it was El Cajon Brewing Company or something. I think yeah. you're right. Um, I had a, uh, um, a, a wine barrel-aged sour from Pier, Intuitive Knowledge. It was, um, uh, it, was a, it was a collaboration they did with um, Mission Trails Meadery. It was phenomenal. It was, uh, it, it'd been a really long time since I popped like a barrel aged sour, I think, because I feel like they used to, a lot of them used to come out in, in full big size bottles, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and now they, they come in in the, the 375s or whatever, a little more drinkable by, by, with just one person. It was phenomenal with cherry, plum, blackberry. Super good. Uh, Josh dropped off uh, a uh, cool zone from uh, Modern Times. I, I wasn't really impressed with it. Weren't you? No. I thought do it, it for me. I thought it was really good. It was, it's a, it's a grisette. It comes in at three and a half, four percent. Um, it, Palace of the Paper Sacks is, is what it was. Oh, okay. Um, I remember they, that. It's phenomenal. I, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. You know, when I was, uh, when I was working in the yard yesterday, uh, I popped one of them. It's super tasty. Um, crushable, I think. But, you know, I, I did catch myself thinking, I'm like, man, I, I, uh, it was a little light. It left you know, me like, wanting for something. It it did. It was a it was a little light. Like so so this at four percent is like a full flavor, yeah. right? Like that yeah. kind of tasted a little. Um, but you know it is what it is. You know it was. Uh, I, mean, I think the the cost of it it was, it was pretty cheap. Twelve dollars yeah. a four pack no, or something. I, I understood that, um, and I like the can, the slim can. Yeah, that tiny. was pretty cool. But I mean, it it just didn't have it there for me. I mean, if I'm going to drink something, if it's hot outside, I'd rather have a lager or pilsner. It's really going to give me some flavor where that thing was kind of weak. Nice, crispy. Yeah. Especially in heat. But uh, not to downplay modern times, but uh, they do great stuff. Uh, Groundhog Day from uh, Humble Sea I had also. And let me see here. I found a couple other ones that I uh, knew damage from uh, Burning Beard. I cracked one of those cans that I picked up over there. Um, And... um, Oh, uh, Creative Creature. I had the Pink Guava, which was awesome. Uh, it's uh, a goes, and it's uh, Smackers, it's called. It was a play on Smuckers Preserves or mm-hmm. whatever. That's a pink 
drink, but it's it was really good. And then uh, they have the uh, Hazenando Frutis. Uh, the creative creature has a, they did have the mango muchado yeah. beer. Well, they now they've done one for uh, uh, Tatiste. Frutiste, that's what it is. Hayes Nando <laughs> Frutiste. And it's a uh, double milkshake uh, hazy with pineapple and milk sugar. It was pretty, really good. pretty doggone good. So, um, what, uh, speaking of popping a can, what, uh, what's up next? What is up next is. What was your favorite of those beers? Um, I'm going to have to say. Right off the top, I would say I enjoyed um, the Create a Creature Sour Ale. Yeah. It was my favorite out of all those. Other than the hazy. I can drink hazies all day. Those are just super delicious. So, if you're in San Diego, you just head over to El Cajon. Yeah. You can pick that up. Like, if you really wanted to drink it today. Yep. Or- yeah. So, they... Um, I want to go out there and get some more. <laughs> they make some really good beers. They... Uh, um, you know, one of their brewers is the guy that, that uh, he used to brew at Burning Beard. Um, left Burning Beard to, he was the assistant brewer at Burning Beard and then uh, went to um, uh, to Creative Creatures. So next up, uh, a, a little hazy IPA from... Uh, Burgeon. From Burgeon. Uh, a big can. Juice Press. Oh, smells fantastic. Is that it? Uh, fruited IPA. Uh, this is this is the juice press with um, what is that dragon fruit, mango, and pink guava. So it yeah. pours just a super bright, vibrant red. Um, pretty amazing. Uh, pretty amazing color. Let's see if we. Uh, I mean, it just looks like it just pops with like that that uh, that dragon fruit and mango. It's awesome. Wow. It's tasting better than I think than it was the the other the other day. Yeah. So we had uh, we ordered a couple of these crowlers um, just a couple of days ago. I think I think I'm I feel like I'm getting uh, I can taste a little more of that. I feel like the fruit didn't really come through super strong the other day. You look at it and you're like, man, that thing is going to be just an absolute juice bomb. It really comes through like a hazy IPA, right? Like I mean, you can definitely smell the hops on there. It's it's beautiful. I mean, the color is awesome. The head is awesome. It's, it's a really fantastic. good hazy IPA. Yeah, I'm impressed with it. I was impressed with it the other day when we had it. So, I think I, I when you look at it, I would expect more of those more of those fruits to come through. But they, um, I think it's just a nice touch, right? It's not not overpowering. I, I thought it was grapefruit at the first when we first tasted it. I thought it was grapefruit. Definitely get the the. The grapefruit, like from the hops, I think. The, yeah. Gosh, it's phenomenal. But I, I, that that fruit, the mango, the um, the the pink guava. Is what's uh, guava is um, good. Yeah, the mango, the guava, dragon fruit. There, it's not overpowering. No. Right. You look at it, and you're like, man, that's a pretty amazing color. I, would, I think I would expect it to be. Um, this is a. This would be out. a definite go back to if I was. I mean, I have one more crowler, so I'm good to go for a little while. But if I need to go back, I hope they have some. That would be a plus. I got to go up there. I got to got to go check that place out. So Virgin does a lot of. Uh, so this is their their you know kind of fruity IPA. They do a lot of different renditions of this beer. Um, they um, are, are of their juice press. Looks like uh, they've you know previously done uh passion fruit mango coconut guava mm-hmm. raspberry um different different renditions of, of of fruit in there did you mention we you had that shipped yeah so um once again you know i i favorite you know living living where we live right and a lot of a lot of breweries doing um doing delivery these guys uh also also deliver um throughout san diego so we uh um, when i when i saw that they put this on their instagram page uh, jumped on, saw that they had it in Crowlers, and uh, and just ordered. Uh, I think what, Tuesday ordered uh, ordered some Crowlers, and Wednesday morning they showed up at nine thirty in the morning or something. <laughs> Pretty amazing. That's just crazy. Yeah, no, it's all like four Crowlers. You know, a, a guy drives up in a Virgin van, runs over, r- hits the ring, and shocked and, that they could find your house. Uh, yeah, that's crazy, huh? They can't find your house, and they find my house. <laughs> that's good. I'm like one map ever. It's in stone. The only map. But that's the, great. Yeah, no, I'm 
I'm super impressed with that. I, I've, I've used, uh, you know, the delivery for a couple of local breweries. North Park uh, delivers. North Park uh, delivers. Actually, yeah. You know, Pure paid Project up. delivers. They, yep. And and all of these guys. Yeah, I mean, it's it's phenomenal. Like yeah. to, there's, I mean, there's something super cool about being able to get super fresh beer delivered to your house, not having to go out there. And it's really, you know, it's not, not too much more. I mean, I think you, you end up spending a little bit more, but these guys are coming from Carlsbad. Well, l- let me say cheers for shipping crawlers out for people. I mean, right. that is legit right there. I don't care what anybody says. You can have a can, a four pack. I'd rather have a crawler. I read, I really would. I'd rather have a crawler shipped than a four pack. Well, it's not something, you know, that, that they, that they normally do can, right? So it's more of, um, I mean, I think like you can go to, you know, the grocery store yeah. and get a virgin or whatever, right? You know, so usually the, the beers that they don't crawler, uh, or, or, or just a draft only, right? So now you get kind of that same experience, uh, somewhere else, maybe. Um, but no, I think it's phenomenal. It's fresh. Um, it's a great I'll beer. drink it. Yeah, I, I definitely want to go, want to go check them out as well. They're actually opening up another brewery in Escondido. Um, next to the, uh, Escondido feed store, I think there was a brewery there hmm. and they just, uh, they just announced that they're going to, they're going to take over that space. Cool. Excuse me. Perfect. It should be awesome. It'd be awesome. They, uh, um, it'll have a one barrel system there. So they'll be able to do some, uh, little test batches. Are you going to, are you going to talk about any adventures that other people have announced this? Uh, like what, what are you thinking, Charlie? Horus. Oh, yeah, so that um, man, they um, so this week they uh, you know he's kind of been teasing for a little while, like uh, sending some emails and, and teasing the fact that he has some big announcement to come up. And, and I was talking to a few people, and I was like, man, I bet you he's gonna like open up a brewery or a, a tasting room or something along these lines. Well, they announced this week. He actually he posted the other day. I, I think I I showed you that he had posted that that hazy IPA right in the sight glass. Yeah, it was a super juicy looking IPA. Um, so you're like, okay, he's gonna, you know, he's, he's got a release coming out. Well, they announced it this week. Uh, what, what it's gonna be. It's, uh, he's starting a new brand. Uh, it's Ferris Falcon. Uh, it's a, a collaboration between, um, Horace and, uh, and Mason Ale Works. It's gonna be a brand where they just release IPAs. Uh, they're gonna, their, their goal is to, is to set up a couple of, uh, different, different, uh, like tasting rooms around. They, um, are you familiar with War Pigs? What War Pigs is? It's, yeah. a, it's like a brew pub. It's in, um, Started in Belgium. Uh, yeah, that's the guy that took over uh, for Stone over there in Germany, right? Well, it's so it's uh, it's a collaboration between Three Floyds in Muncie, Indiana, oh, okay. and McKellar, right? It's a brew pub that they do where they McKellar has his beers, uh, Three Floyds has their beers, and then they have their collab beers and everybody that they kind of came in and did collabs with. So that's you know that's where Horace said he he was like oh man this is uh this is something I need to bring to Southern California was that same type of uh, a setup <clears throat> so that's their plan they're going to do a few different uh um tasting rooms once the pandemic is done uh is is over with which should be i don't know 6 or 8 weeks or something no but once it's done they 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 want to have standalone tasting rooms you'll be able to get Mason Ale Works beers some Horace beers the Ferris Falcon beers um as well as, as 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 other other beers. I'm ready. I'm ready to go right now. I know I'm sold. So <laughs> they uh, their their first beer is a is a collab with um with Par- uh, Parish uh, Ghost in the Machine. Yeah, is is their their big hazy IPA. So it'd be a uh, like a, a a mashup between that and and their base. Uh, the other half IPA. was mentioned in there, and that's what I'm waiting for. They have a lot of uh, the, those guys they, are the most. Legitimate hazy maker. That's your favorite. That's New your England, favorite. Uh, one of your New favorite England brews. style IPAs. Absolutely the best in the country, no doubt. Well, I can tell you, you know, if if you step back and take a look at at Horace and kind of like you know how how he kind of ramped up that first year, there's 55 collaborations around the country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with some of the best beer makers, whether it be on the on IPAs or stouts or sours or whatever it is, right? That guy has made beers with them. Um, or for their festivals or whatever it is. Like he's super dialed in as far as, you know, his connections and the, and the, um, so they're like, now you, you see those same guys are coming to town to make these hazy IPAs with him. So inevitably, like that guy, um, I, I mean, I think in short order, he'll be pumping out, uh, when you're working with and learning from, you know, the, the, the best guys in the business. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, he's, he's shown what he's done with his stouts. I'm excited to see, uh, his IPA. He's had a few sours that are pretty decent too. I mean, I'm, phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, for but, sure. 
you can't you can't even question that he's not making some of the greatest stouts out there. You can't even question that. I yeah, I agree. Um, I, I definitely I've, I've missed the last few pickups, the club pickups, but it, there's some really phenomenal barrel aged beers he's released this at the beginning. You know, you had mentioned the other day a toppling Goliath, and he has a toppling Goliath. Actually, I take that back. Maybe the toppling Goliath one didn't release in this, but there is a, a forager. There's yeah, a, that's uh, the one. Yeah, there's a forager, and then there's um there's a handful of just phenomenal beers. Uh, you know, barrel aged stout with Jay Wakefield and, and um, but he's he's very very talented. I actually um to ensure that I was able to to get uh access to those beers. Cause I, so I guess the the way that it's going to work is if you have a club membership at a Horace, you'll be able to gain access to these beers when they release these these cans. Um, they're not going to be released to the public. It's the, your only access will be uh, cans through Horace to begin with. And then through Mason Ale Works just started a club the other day. Um, me and uh, Nick actually joined that membership. Uh, so um, to get access to those cans for, yeah. for Nick and his friends. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Should be able to get some of those cans. We'll see. It's supposed to be two releases a month. Be we'll fine. see how they. November is the first release. So a couple weeks maybe. Are we Fine. camping out in your backyard? Yeah, we'll see how that how that uh, how that all plays out. It's gonna be really small. They said like I think 180 barrels of beer. So I, I think I figured that out. like that's not a whole lot of beer. Like when you look at the grander scheme of things, like it's only, um, gosh, it was like a it's like a thousand. Was it like uh, I mean I guess I'll do the math real quick. But 30. I mean you got 180 times 35. It's like 4,000 gallons of beer or something a year. It's not very much. Like not a, not a whole total. Lot. I think that was the, I think they said it was 180, it was less than 200 barrels in a year is what the expectation is. Um, that's not a whole lot of beer. No, no, not cons- considering that the stone makes 300,000 barrels. Right. So yeah, really small. The, they're going to have a, a little um, kind of tasting room. They're, the, the, the first one will be up at Mason Ale Works. Uh, so so it'll be a little shot glasses. Yeah, yeah, thirty-five dollars a ton. Thimble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we'll definitely see how it uh, um, how it all plays out. One cool thing about their their um, their little club is on beer pickup days, you get a free beer. Wow, so, I'm a big fan. Hopefully, I mean, I guess I was trying to calculate that out. Seven bucks a beer, sold. Yeah, yeah. Oh, membership, I'll take one. Like it, like it a lot. We'll see how that how that how that plays out. Are we ready for number three, the after party? Yeah. What do you uh? Let's yeah, let's hit that one. What do you got there? Humble C. So um, this is called Pastry Wave Batch Two, and it's uh, a conditioned. It's conditioned on uh, coconut, Veracruz vanilla beans, and Mostra coffee, and we're rocking eleven point eight percent. So the um, Humble Sea is probably my favorite brewery right now. Yeah, uh, I, I think um, their their they hazy IPAs too? are phenomenal. They actually they have a release coming up this uh, on on uh, Sunday the eighteenth of Super Pop tomorrow. Yeah, they um, but and well, Moxa, congratulations to them. Their their Grasp of Oak, a, a collaboration they did with. Uh, uh, Modern Times won uh, bronze medal at the GABF for the the barrel aged beer. Um, so congratulations to them. They put out phenomenal beers, but to see them recognized, uh, that's phenomenal. Virgin as well. That's a uh, another award winner. Silver in the in the pale ale and yeah, a lot of award winners. Uh, and in most, I feel like any like uh, their fingers are in everything. Well, they, to be honest with you, the 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 beers that they're copying are. I'm going to say absolutely the elites because, I mean, there's just something about that coffee working. You know, there's Blue Mountain. There's, um, gosh, I can't remember the name of the raw one. That's, uh, they use a local uh, roaster right there in town in, in uh, Cambridge, uh, Maryland. And it's great, but this has just such a different taste to it. I'm just, I don't know what it is exactly. I can't put my thumb on it. But it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Yeah, no, they. Um, oh my goodness! You take a, that, take a smell of it that. Just, it reminds me of the Horace that we opened up. Doesn't, open it? That Doesn't it though? The, yeah, I mean, it's like now there's stouts and then there's spectacular stouts. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is the this is in that group. This, this is, is amazing. Like, like, 
Like so, I can't get the smile off my face when I smell I, this. Beer. I know <laughs> you can just sit there and just smell that thing, but you can smell that. I mean, that smell that. That's just the coffee on there. The, I the like coconut. smells of like coffee up on the nose, but I taste everything when I drink it. I mean, it's just there. So a, a couple of weeks ago, this this bottle popped up on Humble Sea's webpage. They they did a release on a Sunday, and I scampered through and and um, another brewery that that ships to throughout California. And for some reason, like this bottle was, I, I was able to get a couple of bottles right away. It didn't sell out fast. It didn't That's... sell out very quick at all. So we got, I, I actually on Sunday, I ordered uh, two bottles. I ordered one for Charlie, one for myself. Uh, it got delivered, I think, on Tuesday. Um, and we popped one of them Tuesday night and ordered more. Yeah. Like, like, we're like, Six That's more immediately. Phenomenal. Like, it, we were so impressed with that. With the first beer, uh, we, we ended up. Uh, grabbing, a, grabbing a couple more. That's the way to go with it. I mean, if you find something you like, I, I highly advise to jump on it and hold on to it. Drink it occasionally. Especially delivered right to your doorstep. Yeah, that's terrible, isn't I, it? Um, Look I'm at trying it to stick into the sides there, man. No, it's, it's so good that, that coffee is phenomenal in there. Yeah, the vanilla, the, the toasted coconut. Just Not, a, I could I love the toasted coconut, but you can't even taste the booze in there. I mean, it's just, there's no booziness at all. It's got that, Coffee in the back of your tongue and the uh, vanilla and the uh, coconut on the front. Super tasty. I love it. Gosh. Yeah. No, that's a phenomenal beer. I'm, I'm a big fan. I, uh, um, we're trying to set up a little, uh, little tour. Go, uh, go hit that spot. I actually hit, uh, uh, both of those places up. Probably have to hit most around the way out of town. Grab a coffee. Absolutely. But the, the uh, creme brulee or the campfire. I was just looking at I was looking at that trip up. We're, we're talking about making a little couple day um, drive up the coast, hit uh, go to Santa Cruz, but but essentially whichever way it is, up straight to Sacramento, and then loop back down the coast and hit three breweries or something. And Charlie wants to golf. May not be able to do that. Hey, I might not golf. Yeah. So I mean, soon enough, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go up there and, and take a peek at these guys. I think. I'm ready. Block out, block out two or three days on your calendar. I'm ready. Hmm. I could, go, I could leave tomorrow. Oh, could you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me check my schedule. Yep, available. I'm a fan, so we're yeah. gonna we're gonna head up that way. We gotta we gotta uh, put our minds together and check that out. But uh, Charlie, I thank you for. And so uh, today we had we had three phenomenal beers. We had um, that side project saison, uh, phenomenal wine barrel aged uh, saison. The, the Juice Press uh, Hazy IPA with dragon fruit, mango. Uh, beautiful color, beautiful smell, and fruit all over the place on that one. No, it was great. That uh, Phenomenal Hazy IPA. The color on that is just lights out. Steve, you got a pretty good picture of that? Yeah. So you'll see that on the on the web page. Yeah. I mean, it's just a beautiful color. It's just great. Right. And then follow it up with uh, with this stout, which which I feel fortunate to uh, drink. To, yeah, no, it's phenomenal. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> I love this one. So it's, next week we actually uh, we have a guest. We have our first guest. Mm-hmm. I think uh, we're going to be over at Burning Beard. Burning Beard, going through yeah. their their wonderful beers. So looking forward to that with uh, both um, Mike and uh, Jeff. So it should be interesting. Definitely on, be. on the premises. It's going to be technically challenging. Yeah, there it is. It will yeah. be our first challenge for Steve. But Steve, you can do it. We're we're excited to to check it out. So we'll uh, definitely not be allowed to drink anything that day. <laughs> Besides that, you'll have to get something to eat if you do. So, <laughs> All right. What else you got, Charlie? That's it. Anything else? All right, I'm excited uh, for next week, too. Looking forward to next week. Talk to you then. Cheers. Cheers. The Podcraft Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for information, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers.
You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Oh, oh.